That is a channel. Hi, good morning, guys. Uh, hope everybody is able to hear me. Can I get a yes, please? Or at least a message in chat box. Good morning. Good morning, Ganesh. Uh, right. So thank you all for uh, being here as part of our webinar. Uh, as part of our hundreds webinar uh, mission, we have we have started with this uh, today's uh, 18th webinar, which we are working on with. And then I'll just brief you about HIW. HIW is an organization which trains uh, core segment engineers on uh, industry oriented training and help them to get placed in various segments, guys. So today I welcome Mr. Satish Garu, uh, who's giving us this webinar on role of IoT in India, uh, so, sorry, in Industry 4.0. Uh, Mr. Satish Garu has an uh, 18 years of experience in software industry as well as, and he's also the founder of IoT Users Club. He has delivered IoT trainings on almost like more than 3,000 plus members. He's the facilitator for the IoT lab setups in the colleges. He has been the mentor for most of the IoT startups. Uh, and then in incubation centers also. He has shared IoT knowledge with ECIL, DRDO organizations. He is well known for setting up and managing the innovation labs, uh, which is one of the first of its kind in India. He has expertise in uh, including IoT application development, cybersecurity, as well as program management. Hi, sir. Uh, good morning, everybody. So, can you hear me? Yeah, yes. Hi, Bhavya. Can take over, sir. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, hello, friends. Uh, thanks to HIEE for uh, giving me an opportunity to share the knowledge. And thanks to all the participants who are uh, joining this session. Uh, so yeah, thanks, one and all, uh, for joining this. And I hope uh, it will be a productive time for you. So I feel that I will share the knowledge which I have learned in my during my course of journey in IoT. So today, uh, we are going to talk about the role of IoT in Industry 4.0. So currently we are in Industry 4.0 and uh, uh, Industry Revolution. So Industry 4.0 is a revolution. So we are currently in the Industry 4.0 where you can see a lot of robotics, uh, data analytics and uh, artificial intelligence, autonomous cars, everything is happening. So we will see how IoT, the role of uh, how IoT plays a vital role in the Industry 4.0. And I hope, uh, just I know uh, from which place all are you there from? Uh, may I know? Yeah. Good morning, Ganesh. Good morning. Okay, just to understand the demographics of uh, the people. So because I have some uh, Telugu content, so I need to understand whether other people can understand it or not. So I have a slide. Yeah, Gulbarga. Nimbalkar, Yashoda, Nice, Vijayawada, Omshi, Vizak, Pravalika, Vizak, good morning, East Godavari. Yeah, yeah, thank you. So, Hyderabad. So, Aman is from Hyderabad. Okay, nice. So, we will be seeing this. I hope you are able to see my screen, right? So, role of IoT industry 4.0. Yeah, Nisela from Bapatra Engineering College, Pujita, Jittur, Tirupati, Bharat. Ankush from Maharashtra. Nice. Yeah. Okay, nice. I hope you are able to see my screen and uh, able to listen my voice as well, right? So just say yes, one or two people. I can start the uh, this session. Yeah. 
thank you madhiha thank you deepika yeah so if anything is there so uh, just uh, keep it ready so industry 4.0 so it's all about everyone is talking about 4.0 i think all the students are from mechanical civil and triple uh, e so i i hope uh, we have we don't have students from uh, uh, cse or uh, because this event is concentrated on uh, for the triple e mechanical and uh, civil students yeah manguru thank you thank you balkrishna okay so don't waste our time so let's start so the agenda of this today's uh, iot meeting uh, the uh, webinar will be the first we will talk about the how the industry 4.0 has evolved and we will see what are the challenges uh, which we have in industry 4.0 and next we will talk about uh, so how what is iot and uh, how I, iot came into existence okay and then we will talk the crucial three things of iot this is sensors actuators controllers and communication and next we will integrate the industry 4.0 with iot which we call it as industrial iot so we will see how what are the challenges the iot can solve in the industrial iot and we have a q and a session at the end so keep your questions till the end or we can have some break in between and we can uh, address the q and a sessions as well so this is the basic agenda which i am going to be sharing with you all yeah i hope everyone know this right okay the symbol just can you type in chat yes what is the missing thing in this one so connecting people what is this advertisement used for so yeah nokia ankush thanks yeah this is uh, amuni now on nokia thank you yeah so this is the advertisement which nokia has bought connecting people so this i want to relate with uh, Uh, how we can relate with iot is nokia is the one so thanks uh, uh, the people who has replied in the chat so iot is nothing but connecting things so as nokia has connected the people in that in those days and it lost the connection in between uh, we are not talk talking about those things but uh, iot so internet of things is for connecting things so whichever thing it is a dumb uh, which doesn't have a life so if you want to connect to it then we have an iot so iot is internet of things so with this so do you mean so i can talk to my fridge so really so people can say whether they can talk to this fridge by using iot or not or talk to their uh, uh, rice cooker or talk to their toaster or talk to their uh, anything or table chair fan yes we are able to talk to the things which are in our home in the factory or elsewhere remotely using iot so yes so we can talk to the things so please stop me in between if you doesn't understand anything i will repeat the repeat it again for you so steve jobs says that creativity is just connecting things so he has built a beautiful uh, iphone which iphone and ipad and uh, the the devices of apple are beautiful because the creativity which is there in that one so if you show the creativity with the things then you can build a beautiful uh, uh, world at all so like how steve jobs has done so you too can connect things and build your own startup or easy your life by connecting the things so connecting things is most important now in this era and i will show you why the connecting things has gained the importance so let me so already by you have shared about me so i am satish rao i am uh, completed my masters in computer science but converted into an electronics uh, uh, engineer now so learning iot and sharing the knowledge so uh, i am in the software industry for past 18 years and still continuing it so in the field of uh, security program management Uh, and i am the founder of iot users club where through this club i am sharing the knowledge which i have gained and spreading the knowledge across colleges corporates and uh, government organizations as well so i am as part of your mission i am on a mission to help 1 million students to learn iot without investing in hardware so if you see people spend a lot to in iot devices so i am on a mission to help them without investing in hardware so that's why i started an iot innovation lab in hyderabad which is first of its kind where one can come it's like an electronic library where one can explore the components and later once they try it and they can buy the components 
afterwards so as part of my mission i am sharing the knowledge which i gained it i am not an expert but i am sharing the law knowledge which i have learned in past 5 years in the field of iot and i have a free gift uh, i will be distributing free sensors to you so at the end of the session if suppose if you, all people are there so currently i see 149 participants if uh, all the people above 150 they are there i will be distributing free sensors at the end of this session i hope uh, you will all will be there and i make your time valuable and precious because here yeah, you can use this time for by watching a movie or the other things or spending with your friends but you are with me so i would like to make the time valuable for you so hope just you remind me for the free gift at the end of the session if i forgot it okay thank you yeah so anyone can tell when the internet has born so what is the birthday of internet anyone anyone can take a chance uh when internet was born a guess i hope you are able to hear my voice right so any volunteer from the group so who can answer this question yeah 1800 siddharth yeah nice so still still you are far away so 1800 is for industrial revolution yeah so thanks siddharth for answering the question so january 1st 1983 yeah sakiran so that is the birthday of uh, internet so 1983 nice so still it is 35 years which we are in the era so i will share it you so yeah thanks mutana thanks sanjana thanks somya so the networking so the connection of people started in the year 1969 yeah thanks to all those who have said 1983 uh so the arpanet which we call advanced research projects agency network which started as part of students uh, integrating universities or colleges so that has taken into a shape of a national science foundation network in 1983 which we call it as an uh, internet but in it took 10 years to shape it has and come it has a world wide web so we can say 1983 is the birth of internet but it all its its reachability came to all the people in the year 1993 so if you see the journey has started in the year 1969 of connecting the things so we need an internet to connect to a thing and control monitor and uh, visualize over the internet over the network so if you see i will show you something uh, before internet so everyone i think remember this movie right maya bazar so i hope how many people have watched this one so if you see the this movie came in the year 1957 so i hope uh, people has watched this movie maya bazar i hope the people from gulbarga and uh, uh, maharashtra from maharashtra state so i think it has been dubbed and uh, so this is the first uh, socio fantasy movie so which in the year 1957 so which is directed by k v reddy yeah thanks bharat yeah so this is the movie which came in 1957 but if you see the director's vision so can you remember so what uh, uh, savitri is doing on this one and what uh, gatut gaja is doing around this one and what is this uh, stool all is about so anyone can take a guess so if you see this thing so all the things so the director is very visionary i can say yeah thanks sirisha so if you can say so what savitri is watching there and what gatut gaja is doing there and what uh, the shakuni is standing on the stool so if you see you can see a video call there and you can see a lie detector and you can see an intrusion detection whenever abhimanyu enters into the uh, fields of uh, gatut gacha forest so he gets a alarm in the drum so even before the internet so director has thought about this video call intrusion detection and lie detection so can you remember so before the at that point of time we don't have so how we are talking about uh, we don't have internet we don't have this uh, mobile phones now everything is possible now so with this so i will take you to the uh, to the next leg of uh, the session so industry 4.0 
so industry 4.0 you have everything so you have connectivity you have drones you have satellites you have robotics you have plcs you have mobile phones everything so let's see how this industry 4.0 has evolved okay uh, so let me continue so this we call industrial revolution uh, so the industrial revolution started in the european countries and which has been spread across all the world so as part of industrial revolution uh, uh, india has been invaded by british so if you see the industrial revolution we have four parts so industry 1.0 industry 2.0 industry 3.0 what we call industry 4.0 so let's see so what has brought into this industry 1.0 so if you see do you remember something by seeing the animation so in the bahubali movie also uh, praka the prabhas did something yeah right so he from automates the process of uh, lifting the water or stone crushing okay so industry 1.0 started in the year 1765 and the, we have discovered coal in that one so coal is the major source of uh, energy there so after uh, discovering the coal so they have developed steam engines so which runs on the power of steam so where they use coal for burning the water and getting the steam and running the steam engines and products are manufactured so pre before industry 1.0 all our uh, this thing uh, uh, agriculture oriented so after industry 1.0 we got products and processes whatever they used to do became mechanized so they have an automation for that one so the economy um guys sorry for the interruption just give us one minute i think there is some network glitch with uh, satish garu just give, give me a moment i i appreciate your patience thank you anything happened bhavya uh nothing sir actually i think your network was uh, weak so you you came out and then you reconnected uh, please share your screen again sir yeah yeah sure thank you yeah where i stopped industry 1.0 yes sir yes yeah sorry yeah so industry 1.0 so we call it as industrial revolution 1.0 version 1 so we have started in the year 1765 so where the discovery of coal has happened and which has resulted in the development of steam engines and which through which they have invented spinning machines and looms to make fabric so this was the major invention in 1765 and our economy shifted from agriculture to uh, industrial economy so previously it was our agriculture economy so everyone used to depend on that one and now it started to industry economy and where the processes became mechanized so so mechanical products came here to automate the spinning machines and looms all those things and water transportation has been replaced with the wagon transportation that means railways has uh, with the development of steam engines railways came into existence and this transportation has changed a major step into the wagon transportation so discovery so we have discovered coal and that has changed the industry 1.0 and later when we go to industry 2.0 so industrial revolution 2.0 so it started in the year 1870 you can say 
1700 and it is 1800 century so here the major discovery was electricity gas and oil so this has brought uh, to develop a combustion engine has been invented so where it has given rise to motors and uh, where they have invented telephone and telegraph in industry 2.0 and transportation improved with planes and cars and we have mass production so mass production has taken place and cement was discovered so steel and chemically based products entered into the market and the major discovery was the cement and electricity and gas and oil so this happened in the year from year 1870 so which is industry 2.0 and when it comes to 3.0 which started in the year 1900 century 1969 so where industrial robotics came so here we have electronics came into picture where, where plcs has been uh, designed and developed and nuclear power was the one of the major invention here where computers played a vital role in controlling the robots and automation so industry 1.0 the process has been mechanized but in industry uh, 3.0 automation came into existence and where the men has been replaced with the industrial robotics so industrial robotics came into the plcs so on the microcontrollers has came into picture in the industry 3.0 so everything in from nine year 1969 and computers was playing a vital role here and once industry 3.0 finishes from the year 2000 plus so which we call we got industry 4.0 so industrial revolution which we are there in now at present so here the internet and digital world came into existence so internet came into existence as we have seen from 1993 everyone can access that one and uh, shift to renewable energy so there uh, in industry 1.0 coal was discovered 2.0 uh, gas and electricity was discovered but here in industry 4.0 so we shifted to renewable energy like solar wind power all those things and iot came into existence in industry 4.0 where we have uh, manufacturing automation has been done and digital products and services are there and data analytics and cloud technology was playing a vital role in industry 4.0 so that's why we see the growth of electronics in industry 3.0 which came into internet and iot is playing a vital role in industry 4.0 if you see in industry 4.0 all the major industries are automated so if we have a uh, the manufacturing belt uh, in manufacturing industry where everything was automated and packaging industry automatic packaging is taking place and in the supply chain management so we have small robots where we are uh, delivering all the things so industry 4.0 where we are present in and everything is automated now and still a lot of scope to automate in these industries and you people uh, i think uh, you will be joining these industries or you will be having your own industries but automation will be a plus point to your industry and if you see a recap so first revolution the major invention was mechanization and the steam and the water power so they have invented the water power came into existence in the second revolution so mass production and electricity came into existence so in the third revolution so electronic and it systems and automations or the major contributors in the third revolution and in the fourth revolution we have cyber physical systems so which are iot connected devices so this is the industrial revolution which we are talking about and in the coming uh, session uh, slides we will see how this industrial uh, industry 4.0 is integrated with iot okay so we can say industry 4.0 is nothing but smart factories so you might have heard about the word smart so with the uh, integration with iot you can make anything smart so the main thing in industry 4.0 is smart factory so if you see the requirement of engineers so just i will be checking the chat box so let's see so industrial revolution 1.0 so what kind of engineers are mostly required so any guesses from the group 
So industry 1.0, the major invention was the coal and steam engine and power. So yeah, so and the process automation. So thanks, Purna. So mechanical engineers are required in industrial 1.0. Yeah. So in the industry 2.0, uh, the electricity was invented. I think. Uh, uh, so may I know? So which engineers are required in 2.0? And the cement is also introduced, uh, discovered in 2.0. Yeah. So thanks, Harshini. So yeah, thanks, Rohita. Yeah, civil, electrical, and mechanical. So these three people are uh, required in industry 2.0. And let's come to industry 3.0. So industrial revolution 3.0. So Purna, yeah, electrical, EC. Yeah, thanks, Bhargavi. So EC are the ones, so electronics engineers are required and mechanical engineers required. So correct, uh, Logesh, triply electronics, uh, electrical and electronics engineers are required in 3.0 and mechatronics. So mechanical plus electronics. This is the most thing which is required in 3.0. Yeah, thanks, Pal Krishna. And we are in the industry 4.0. So can, can someone say? Yeah, so thanks, Mutana. Yeah. Yeah, thanks, Shalini. So CSC, IoT, yeah. So we need computer engineers at this point of time in industry 4.0, yeah. Robotics means mechanical again, Chagam. Yeah. So in industrial 1.0, mechanical engineers played a vital role. And in 2.0, so has with the introduction of electricity, electrical engineers, civil engineers, and automobiles also been invented, planes and cars. So we have the, uh, automobile engineers in 2.0 and 3.0. So electronics engineers has the, with the introduction of microcontrollers, PLCs. So we have uh, uh, electronics engineers and mechatronics, mechanical plus electronics for the robotics. So we need uh, mechatronics and in industrial 4.0. So we need data science engineers and computer science engineers. So from starting industrial 1.0 to 4.0. So we require, we have, we need every, engineering stream so it's not only that only computer science is great or electrical electronics is great so with the cooperation of all the engineering streams so we can build a beautiful iot device or a mechanical device or a robot it's. so if you see a robot so for robot so mechanic mecha, mechanical people should uh, design the arms and uh, all the things and electronics people should design write the coding how the arms and um, these things should be moving and electrical people should design how the battery so they should check uh, the battery conditions the power supply all those things for those things and civil people they need to yeah, lay a building or put your building construct a building construct a road so to move the robot smoothly so every engineering stream is most important in our daily life so without a mechanical engineer we can't imagine a factory without an electronics engineer we can't uh, imagine uh, anyone and we call without me mechatronics we can't imagine a robot and without computer science we can't imagine a yeah, beautiful mobile so whenever we are accessing the dashboards taking decisions all those things yeah i hope you agree with me so all the four, four or five streams required for our job day-to-day -day life to get continued so everyone agree with this yeah it has to be agreed So what are the benefits of industry 4.0? If you see, yeah, thanks, Sai. So all the streams are equally important. It's not only computer science is more on this thing. Yeah, thanks, Krishna Vini. Yeah, thanks, Nagaratna. Yeah, thanks to the people who are interacting actively. So thanks once again to all those things. Yeah, thanks, Pujita. Yeah, so. What are the benefits industry 4.0 has brought to the in the, uh, to the people? So one thing is the productivity has been increased with optimization and automation. And the real-time data for supply chains in real-time economy, so they can able to uh, manage all the inventory in the supply chain. Suppose with the introduction of ERP packages, so enterprise resource planning, 
so this is the software which they use to track where the component is suppose in an automobile industry suppose if you want to have one piece of uh, uh, the part the mechanical part you can query the database and you can say it is there available in so and so shop or so and so store or so and so this thing so they can minutely track the supply chain and with the monitoring so they have advanced maintenance and monitoring possibilities with the business continuity so with the predictive analysis so they can estimate when a machine will uh, become fail and they can uh, do repairs to that one before it goes it failed and they can continue the business and we have iot enabled quality improvement and cobots cobots came in industry 4.0 so which are collaborative robots so which help humans in doing the things suppose we have uh, cobots for welding the things for a pcb assembling for, for all those things so we will be machines will be working with these cobots collaborative robots and better working conditions and superior sustainability so we have working conditions has been improved in industry 4.0 with is4 standards all those things coming into existence where it provides the better working conditions to for the employees and personalization opportunities so if you see we are getting a car or a bike personalized for us so they are integrating the trust of the customer with the personalization opportunities so you can design your own car and give it to the manufacturer and uh, nowadays he can deliver you with your whatever the color and the these things the uh, if you see the royal enfield bike you can design on your own and you can get your bike so customer centric so industry 4.0 is customer centric and they are doing it a yeah? personalized products are being delivered and what are the technologies which is driving industry 4.0 so the first major thing i can say is iot so that is the with widespread of use of sensors so iot industry is driving and additive manufacturing so which is which we call it has a 3d printing so if you say uh, the most uh, with the help of additive manufacturing there is we have spent less cost in doing prototypes and we have advanced robotics we have touch and voice interfaces with augmented reality and information technology and operational technology convergence so machine to machine and iot networks and ai and ml are playing a vital role so if you see uh, we have the big data so how this big data is coming so big data is coming without human intervention from the sensors which we have attached to these components or products or machines to the industry 4.4 so all this data you are getting a terabytes of data within milliseconds from these sensors so all this the data became big data and because of the big data so data scientists came into exist uh, into the role and where they have to churn this data and data mining came into the uh, this thing and they have to do analyze it and prepare reports for the higher management where they can form the organizational policies so we have mobile technologies we have cloud computing we have machine to machine 3d printing advanced robotics and security security is one of the technological pillars in industry 4.0 where we should be careful and we have rfid technologies is being widely used in uh, uh, manufacturing industry so uh, and iot and cognitive computing is also being used so if you say these are the technological pillars which is driving industry 4.0 and these are the companies which are helping industry 4.0 and if you see in this race we have honeywell so which is into iot automation so we have google we have oracle so oracle is uh, uh, we have uh, qualcomm sap so sap and oracle are leading this uh, industry 4.0 with their products called erp enterprise resource planning so into the manufacturing industries and other companies are taking a smaller bit but oracle and sap are the major contributors with respect to software for industry 4.0 and if you see the challenges with the industry 4.0 is so first thing is there is a technical gap in the skills so currently we are not getting skilled labor to work in these industries so for which uh, so there is a lot of uh, skill gap so whatever we learn and whatever we are implementing is totally different so that's why we are seeing so many institutions coming to bridge the gap between academia and the skill sets between the industry and we have data sensitivity so lots of data will be generated because of the sensors which we attach it to the system so 
this data is so sensitive and it should be protected and it should be uh, handled with care so such that it can't go into the other hands so interoperability is also a big challenge so whenever if uh, someone produces some uh, iot device so other people can't use that one other technology can't use that one so there is no interoperability between the devices which they develop because lack of standards so we need to have a standards so where they can use it if you see the mobile now so previously used, we used to have different uh, charge pins for uh, different mobiles now the government has stand, standardized that we should have a one charge port or charge pin for that one so that's why we have the common micro usb charging port for all the mobiles and now we are seeing usb c so that is another uh, this thing but micro usb port so there is no interoperability if you produce one iot device it can't be used with the other people so security so with industry 4.0 and with everything is connected to the world so there is a scope there is a lot of scope for hackers to attack it for the people to attack and to capture the data or play with the data or disrupt the industries all those things and handling data growth so as i said with the data sensitivity lots of data being generated and you should carefully handle this data so uh, we need to have a data science engineer where they can generate the reports so the and manipulate these reports and uh, with the data and give meaningful reports out of the data so currently so we have a gap so technical skills where well, this is a major challenge in the industry 4.0 so we are not getting a proper resources available where they, we can use him from day one so you need to learn a lot you are to fill this gap so what uh, so that is about industrial revolution of uh, the revolution from 1.0 to 4.0 so if you see the indian government and the industry 4.0 what india is doing on this one so if you see so india has a website called samarth udyog bharat 4.0 so which is called smart advanced manufacturing and rapid transformation transformation hub so samarth so as part of this industry 4.0 so they have established five engineering facilities centers so where we have a lab in pune so center for industry 4.0 so where people can go and explore the things and we have a foundation for smart manufacturing so for additive manufacturing we have smart manufacturing simplified so and we have issc factory so at r and d platform at uh, indian institute of science in bangalore and we have a central manufacturing technology institute cmti at bangalore so where they have a manufacturing demo and development cell and as part of uh, this thing at iit karakpur so we have advanced manufacturing technology cy center of excellence so india is helping all this industry 4.0 with these five common engineering facility centers suppose if you want to learn more or learn uh, or you want to share the knowledge so through these facility centers you can share the knowledge with all the industries so industry 4.0 so it is a revolution which is now so either we should be we are part of who makes it happen or let it happen to us so either we will be on the one side so either we should be part of the who makes it happen that is being part of the industries or let it happen to us so by consuming the things so which were produced in the industry 4.0 there is no middleman in this one middle path so either we should be on the that side or the consumer side or the producer side this is so industry 4.0 so do you agree that we have industry 5.0 anyone so is there any industry 5.0 yeah thanks ganesh yeah, thanks from shay yeah banu thanks yeah industry 5.0 is nearby to us yeah yeah thanks balkrishna thanks madhuri thanks logesh yeah thanks rohita so industry 5.0 is nearby so where we will be closely working with the cobots so collaborative robots what we call and man and machine will work together with the robots and we have a demand of a officer called chief robotic officer where he should interact between the humans and the robots so this is the new role which will be <laughs> existing in an industry 
so chief robotic officer we can name them and the other thing is industry 5.0 is concentrated on the environmental protection so sustainable resources and green energies all those things so without uh, polluting the environment and we have digital twins and artificial intelligence and uh, machine learning will playing a vital role in the industry 5.0 so it's almost we are in the edge of industry 4.0 and the rise of industry 5.0 which we are in and all your people's help is required or your role is required in the industry 5.0 either you should let it happen or you should be part of it yeah so before start with iot i hope uh, it is clear about uh, industrial revolution right so any questions till this point of time by you any questions do we have so can we ask participants if they have any questions with the industrial revolution yes sir we can but they're saying no yeah, yeah no okay either there are two things i should make it clear or they, should, they didn't understand it so i hope i made the concepts clear yeah no grishma yeah okay i hope this no is for questions not for the concepts so that is that is the journey from uh, uh, thanks shima so this is our journey from industry 1.0 to industry 5.0 yeah thanks manu okay so let me take to the next step so which is my favorite topic is internet of things do you call it as a evolution or revolution yeah i have free sensors to distribute to you people at the end of this session so please remember me and who are proactive active in the chat so i will taking their names okay yeah vamshi evolution yeah siddhar evolution so there is the difference between and evolution and revolution if you see evolution it takes from it takes time to evolve and it takes step by step and revolution is a sudden thing which will happen with the glimpse of time yeah thanks archana yeah thanks shilpa work kumar yeah right so it is the evolution it's more it started evolving so if you see uh, the robo 2.0 movie so it's an evolution so we have chitty 1.0 and chitty 2.0 and we have chitty 3.0 so rajnikanth's movie yeah yeah thanks anisha it's an evolution so let's see how it got evolved okay so first we have an era of pre internet so human to human communication where we used to have fixed mobile telephony and we used to have pagers uh, before the internet we have used to have pagers if you can, you can see the pushpa movie so pushpa hero will be using the pager for communication so when internet came in the year 1993 so where the email information and entertainment started and with the introduction of web 2.0 so internet of services came into existence the productivity e-commerce all this uh, ebay.com amazon everything they are evolved in the internet of services so after internet of services we started a movement called internet of people where social media played a vital role like skype facebook youtube twitter and orkut so this was their uh, social media platform of google so when i am studying my mca in the year 2001 so we used to have orkut anyone remember that one i hope you people have might have not noticed orkut so which was the social media platform yeah thanks ani thanks for yeah, yeah. <laughs> you to part of the tarkut community yeah yeah thanks ankush yeah these are these are there so some evolve some go with the time so this is there and so internet of people came now facebook is dominating linkedin is dominating twitter is dominating in this race and youtube so these are the four uh, this thing which are dominating and now the next is internet of things so where machine to machine communication so it's happening so it's an evolution not yet revolution and we may don't know what will be coming next to us yeah so this was in 2015 we used to manually switch on the light and now we can say okay google 
turn on the light. So this is the beauty. So which has been brought with the help of. Yeah, thanks, Sunny. So still you remember our code. Okay, thank you. Yeah, so this is how you're turning on your light. So yeah, clapping method. That is uh, again electronics, not internet. So it's an embedded system. So if a device is not connected to internet and which acts on its own, within its own network, then we call it as an embedded system. Yeah. So now Alexa, sorry, Alexa is playing a vital role in everyone's home or OK Google. These are being replaced with the, these voice assistants replaced. And one thing, uh, yeah. So this is how the revolution has evolution has started and which we are going now. So let's see what is an IoT. So we have a lot of things to hear. I hope uh, you have already made your hands dirty on making some things. So IoT is nothing but a system of physical devices. So we will have this physical device. So thing, uh, so which will receive and transfer data over wireless networks. So without human intervention. So has the process to make it simple. So we have the thing which needs to be monitored, controlled or visualized. And we have sensors which is attached to those things. And we have actuators to the thing. And we have a controller which controls the data from the sensors and which communicates to the cloud. So at the cloud, we will take a decision. We can monitor, control these things. So it refers to a system of physical devices that receive and transfer data over wireless networks. So I hope you can identify the Arduino, you know, here, Node MCU we have. So we have some uh, driver board here. So on this board, yeah. So next see what, so how IoT works. So this is something I think, I hope everyone knows about this one, but just I want to recollect this one. So every device will have hardware like sensors. So which collects the data. So once the data is collected by the sensors, it's then shared to the cloud with the help of the controller and with the help of the software, which it has. And once the data sends to the cloud, the software in the cloud analyzes and transmits the data to the users via an app or website. So you will get an email or you will get a mobile alert or you will get an SMS. So from the cloud or the device can hear from the cloud what action needs to be taken. So with the help of actuators. So this is how IoT works in a simple terminology. So if you see the history of IoT, so for everyone, so everything, so we have a history. So 1980, so this is an internet connected toaster which has been built by John Romke. So he's the first person. So because uh, uh, in 1983, internet was born and 1993, World Wide Web became popular. So in between this, the John Romke, a person who was working on the TCP IP protocol, so has connected internet toaster to bake the bread. And in 1999, so the word internet of thing has been coined by a person, Kevin Aston. So we whom he called this as father of IoT. And in 2003, so Walmart has automated their inventory with the help of RFID and 2003, we have a small baby called Arduino. So which has born, which has changed the entire electronics industry. So in the electronics industry, we can say there are two periods. One is before Arduino, pre Arduino and post Arduino. So Arduino has made the electronics programming so easy that even a child, a student from fifth class can do programming the electronics. So this is how the birth of Arduino has changed the entire game electronics industry, programming industry. And 2011, we have the first thermostat which controls the AC. And in 2016, IoT security becomes the next frontier. So everyone has feared about the IoT. So Mira, Mirabot attack took place in 2016 and everyone concentrated on the IoT security as a major role. So if you see Kevin Aston, so uh, for computers, we have Charles Babbage. So for IoT, we term, we call him it as father of IoT because he coined this word. He invented uh, this word, Internet of Things in the year 1999. So where just internet was born. And he assumed that at that point of time, only uh, 
humans used to enter data into the computers. So he realized that humans will be replaced with the sensors to enter data, and that has been possible now. So if you attach a temperature sensor to a device, it collects the temperature data and it transmits the cloud where we can monitor. So there is no human intervention required. So this is the power. He coined the word Internet of Things and we call him as the father of IoT. And if you see, there will be three parts in an IoT device. One is sensors, one is actuators, one is controller and communications. So five parts. So if you see sensors are the source of IoT data. So sensors, are, we call them as transducers. So transducers property is it converts one form of energy into another form of energy. So it's uh, main thing is a sensor accepts the data from the environment and converts into a electrical pulses. So electrical pulses that determines the reading is read by the controller. So if, for example, a microphone is a sensor that takes a transducer, which takes the vibrational energy from the sound waves and converts into electrical energy. So for every IoT device sensor plays a vital role. So you should be very careful in choosing the right sensor for the right automation. So if you see with this is with respect to industrial 4.0. So we have a lot of sensors available. So <coughs> we have temperature sensors which plays a vital role uh, where it can read the temperature. So near the furnace or at your furnace where in the room temperature, humidity temperature, where it can send. And we have pressure sensors. So all these industries have a lot of uh, pressure points. So these pressure sensors uh, checks the pressure and it alerts us. And we have level sensors. So suppose in chemical industry, we need to maintain certain levels of fluids. So this uh, by the, with the help of level sensors, so we can maintain the fluids level. And we have infrared sensors and proximity sensors, which plays uh, a vital role in the industry 4.0. So where, uh, whenever something object comes in the packaging industry, this proximity sensors plays a uh, widely used after uh, to, near, to count the packages, all those things. And in smoke sensors, uh, gas sensors, what we call, so to detect the leakages from the furnaces in the industries and we have optical sensors, for, which is same as uh, for the proximity and MEM sensors. So which is to uh, attach it to the motors for the to detect the acceleration. To the of the products of the industries. So next, if you go with the actuator, so actuator is also operates in the reverse direction of a sensor. It takes electrical input and turns into a physical action. So, for example, a motor. So electric motor takes the electrical pulses and it rotates or a loudspeaker or a speaker is a good form led so light emitting diodes it is one of the actuator which takes the electrical pulses and which converts just a minute let me have some water yeah till now any any doubts you have with respect to iot Yeah, thanks. I hope you are uh, I am making the concepts clear or. Uh, yeah, no, thank you. So actuator. So without a sensor and actuator. So I think uh, having an IoT device is waste. So LED. So LED is a one form of the actuator. So without LED. So there is no uh, it talks LED talks a lot to us. So if we connect a phone charger to our mobile, if the LED is not lit, then it says that I'm not charging. And if you see the, our Wi-Fi router, the lights, LED lights are not blinking, then we say that internet is not there. So no display is required. So with the form of LEDs, a lot of, it, uh, lot of messages can be conveyed. So we are controlling a huge system of traffic with only three LEDs, three LED colors, red, green, and yellow. So no display of messages is required, just color is enough. And if you see, these uh, uh, 
because uh, this proximity sensors or inductive sensors or ultrasonic sensors or capacitive sensors and the relays so all the electronics works on 3 volts or 5 volts but if you want to control the 230 volts or 440 volts which is used in the industry so we use relays and we have motors cylinders uh, so actuators so we have basic air grippers with guide rodless cylinders so these are the actuators which we use in the process automation so these are some of the actuators which we use as part of industry 4.0 and when it comes to the controller so we have uh, the sensor collects the data and it should transfer to someone so right controller plays a vital role here controller is like a brain it collects all the data and it sends to the cloud and then it gets the data from the cloud and it which they again it transmits to the actuator in response to the sensed input so controller is like a brain of the iot device so if you see so arduino uno raspberry pi node mcu beagle bone so these are some of the things yeah i hope uh, you have done programming or heard about these devices right about node mcu so you might have heard this is the game changer in the iot industry in 2015 they have introduced esp01 so which is available for two dollars that is around 100 rupees at that point of time so which has which is a microcontroller plus and a wi-fi stack which it has and it used to connect to the internet home wi-fi so after that esp01 evolved to esp12 which we call it as node mcu and later now it is the advanced version is esp32 and if you take the raspberry pi yeah so arduino can't connect to internet so we need again the help of wi-fi controller which needs to connect to arduino you know to talk to internet or ethernet shield so on top of arduino we need to attach it yeah so raspberry pi so it has been discovered to teach electronics to students but now the iot industry has taken up it as because it is a single board computer so with the gpio pins where uh, you can connect to internet and you can process the data so iot industry has got this raspberry pi and the beagle bone so beagle bone is a, because all this open source hardware has made our iot job easy so without these brains iot doesn't exist and programming these brains is also very easy so you need to have the knowledge of c language or python language to program these devices there is no need to learn any new language see so first part we have the sensors and the actuators with the physical layer and the controller collects the data so once the controller collects the data it has to transmit to a machine or it has to transmit to the cloud so we have the communication modules like wi-fi bluetooth zigbee lora long range if you want to communicate over 5 to 10 kilometers of range then we use long range lora modules and we have gsm sim based modules and we have nfc near field communication and rf radio frequency communication so from 2000 i think wi-fi was there in every home so that is also one of the reason for the boom of iot and bluetooth every phone has a bluetooth connectivity you can use machine to machine communication using bluetooth and if you want to travel so it's the bluetooth radius is 10 meters and if you want to travel more than 10 meters so you will use the zigbee protocols and gsm after the invention of the mobile phones so gsm is playing a vital role in transferring the data from device to device so for any iot device you need one of this communication module to transfer the data suppose if you want to have a home automation home bulb it has to talk to wi-fi suppose if you want to switch on it or on a motor in the agricultural field you need a gsm or lora module suppose if you want to enter and exit from a gate or a office gate then you will use nfc communication and for controlling your robots within a radius you will be using zigbee or bluetooth communication so one of this communication is required for the iot device so that is about hardware so what type of software communication protocols are there to talk to these devices so if you see we have http protocol so which works on the request and response pro, uh, principle and 
the other thing is message queue telemetry protocol this is a famous protocol mqtt protocol which we use uh, in the iot industry which became popular and which has been designed uh, developed by ibm and after that if you want a continuous communication with the iot device we use web sockets so whatever the communication which you are seeing now so in the zoom my video is works on the web sockets so real time communication and if it is for machine to machine we have constant application protocol so these are the four protocols which we will be using in terms of the software and for example if you see sensor to actuator flow so if we have a sensor a temperature sensor which detects heat in an industry so it sends the signal to the control center or the controller and the controller being sends to the so it detects what needs what the action needs to be taken so it again uh, talks to the actuator so which will turns the sprinkler so this is one kind of sensor to actuator flow and if we take one more example so we have a sense soil moisture sensor so because of uh, iot everything is speaking now plants are talking to us yeah uh, so soil moisture detects that the water is excessive again it sends a signal to the control center and control center sends commands to the water pump control center is nothing but the controller or the program which we have written and water pump will be switched off so this way you can control from sensor to actuator yeah so till now uh, that is about iot now we will see yeah zigbee and robo movie correct so intel edison yeah these are the another uh, board gautam so which is there so yeah so arduino is both software plus hardware so it is not a single thing so arduino has changed the world so now let's get uh, let's prepare for the marriage of industry 4.0 and iot so which we call it as industrial iot so any questions at this point of time yeah thank you i hope i am making the concepts uh, very clear for you thanks rena thanks sirisha now let's get ready for the marriage of industry 4.0 and iot which we call it as industrial iot yeah so what is industrial iot so again so iot plus industry when we can get connected then it became a smart factory okay smart industry so like smart agriculture smart cities smart governance everything we are making smart with the use of sensors and actuators so here also we are making use of sensors and actuators to enhance the manufacturing and industrial process and it is defined as a machines computers and people enabling intelligent industrial operations and where data analytics plays a vital role so lot of data the sensors gives we need to analyze it and we need to properly but take decisions with the help of the data so let's see what are the practical iot use cases so if you see the iot infrastructure so you will have the sensors actuators and nodes at the ground level at the physical layer and you have iot gateway so which we call a wifi router or anything dsm module and this wifi router sends data to the iot platform or you can have an on premise server so if you want to make your data secure by not transferring to the cloud then you have a on premises server where it controls uh, and then it is the data is processed analyzed for the business application and automated process database again the flow will come and again actuator will be triggered so this is the flow infrastructure of the iot so if you see what are the top industrial iot use cases which we have so first thing is predictive maintenance so iot has made uh, so the business continuity which i talked in the industry 4.0 advantages so with the help of predictive maintenance so we can uh, reduce that one and location tracking so this is another major use case which industry is uh, using it and workplace analytics so this is also another one uh, with the energy optimization and remote quality monitoring so these are the top five 
IoT use cases with the help of industrial IoT use cases, which is being existing in the industries now. So if you see the predictive maintenance, so organization shows a lot of data. Suppose if they have a motor, so it have a tracking belt. So there they can attach this uh, uh, sensors and with the help of machine learning and data analytics, so they can identify when a part become uh, wear and tear. So because of wear and tear, so the part become unused. So with the help of predictive analytics using the machine learning algorithms, so we can identify at which point of time the part will become, the part fails. So we can call an engineer before that time and we can get that rectified. So predictive maintenance is one of the major use case in the industrial IoT. And the other thing is location tracking or asset tracking. So I was talking about uh, with GPS systems, RFIDs and with the software packages. So we can track each and a minute part in an industry where that place is. Whether if you want a small nut and bolt also, we can track using the RFIDs plus with the software which is there. So real time precise location data, yeah, this is what we can identify. Suppose uh, if you see the Amazon, uh, so whenever you order something in the Amazon, so you will get a SMS alerts that your package will be delivered and so and so date between so and so time. So how they are tracking? So because of GPS and because of the network which they have. So all this is possible because of location tracking. And where IoT is helping the industries with the help of GPS modules and other sensors and softwares. And workplace analytics. So if you see, so we have a lot of sensors placed everywhere. So where it will help the human resource management to optimize uh, the uh, skills. So it can identify the skill gaps, which I was talking about. So suppose if you are unable to operate in any uh, product or any machine in the industry 4.0, so it can identify, it can have a tailor-made program for you where they can conduct a training or workshop something and they can enhance your skills. And I will tell you a use case where in Dubai, so they are using IoT. So in your, it, it's a big uh, supermarket or a big workshop. If the employees gather together at a single point of time, the uh, message goes to a manager that employees are pulling up at a certain point of time. So they are tracking it that much precisely about the workplace. And in software industries, you can identify whether a person is sitting in that uh, chair or not by having the bulb which is lit up on the on his head. If he sits in the chair, the light above his lights up. So from a distance uh, measurement on the floor, you can identify whether a person is available in the chair or not. So we are, uh, so IoT is playing a vital role in the workplace analytics and, and you can track how many times a person is, uh, whether a person is uh, sitting in the office chair or in the restroom, you can try out in the pantry or in the restaurant of the office. So these are all data which you can collect it and you can properly utilize it and uh, which you can enable the workplace, make a better workplace. And remote quality monitoring. So as I said, we have gas sensors or smoke sensors. So environmental sensors, if you can see, say that Delhi is the most polluted city or Mumbai is the most polluted city. So how you are getting this data? So it is because of the uh, pollution sensors. So, so we use that uh, PPM 2.5, uh, particles data collection and so for every e industry so environmental sensors are playing a vital role in estimating what is the healthy of that environment so remote monitoring improves the productivity so here uh, we address the government is taking a uh, uh, stopping the pollution by installing the sensors in the near the industries so radiation so what is the air pressure what is the water control all these things with the help of remote quality monitoring and this is one of the best use case in the industry of energy optimization. So you can measure the electricity at what particular time it's uh, consuming more power, uh, at what particular time it's not consuming it. So you can optimize the energy and you can run that machine at that particular levels. So effective in reducing energy consumption and power optimization. So, and HVAC system, suppose at lunchtime, the, uh, workers won't there in the workshop. So it's better switch off the AC at that point of time. 
and again at the, when they come back you can switch on the ac so hvac systems can be controlled with the help of workplace analytics where you can optimize the energy and where you can save the power so those are the five uh, use cases so predictive and predictive maintenance that is the major one and energy optimization so these are the two things and you have a lot of things to automate uh, in industry 4.0 and we need a lot of engineers to be part of that one. So apart from the knowledge which you have, so you need this uh, knowledge of IoT where you can automate the things. So currently, if you do it, do things twice, then just automate it. So as again, I will reiterate that Steve Jobs said, creativity is just connecting things. So how creative you are, then you will be more productive. So with the help of uh, the Steve Jobs quotation, learn IoT and be creative and start your own startup or automate the process in a place where you are working. Okay, I hope uh, uh, that is, so we have done, we have seen the evolution of industrial revolution. So we have seen what is IOT and we have clubbed how IOT and industrial uh, IOT can, uh, uh, how IOT is useful in the industrial 4.0 and 5.0 because, and what's next? So I hope I made the concepts clear to you. So, so I run a small meetup group. So you can join that meetup group. So where you will get notifications about the events which I takes place. And you can subscribe to my YouTube channel. So which is IOT Users Club. And you can watch this getting started with IOT video where I have shared how you can build an IOT device using the hardware. So here I didn't get an opportunity to show you the real hardware. So next time we plan with HIE once and hands-on session so that you can come and you can experience and you can program this uh, little brains and you can like my Facebook page, you can get connected with me. So in the getting started with IoT, you can clearly watch uh, how you can program this uh, Node MCU in that one. And as I said, free gift, I'm giving you free sensors. So your mobile is an IoT powerhouse. It's a powerhouse of IoT. So you have a lot of sensors in that one. So we have an accelerometer sensor, you have ambient light sensor, you have gyroscope, proximity, fingerprint, face ID, everything. So these are, the, so you, I will show you how you can use these sensors in the coming up workshops, uh, which we will uh, organize along with HIAE. So, there is no need to buy any sensor in the market. So you can use these sensors along with what you have. So this is my free gift, which I was talking about. And I thank you to HIE for giving me an opportunity for sharing my knowledge with you all people. And you can join IoT Users Club to make things smart. Thank you, sir. Thank you. That was actually a wonderful session. I felt everybody connected uh, through chat with you. And guys, the session is open for the queries. You can put your questions and we can answer if you have any. Yeah, if uh, I can show you a small demo how IoT works. So let me share some links to you people. Uh, yes, sir. Before you share it, I'll just uh, tell a small announcement, guys. You have been given a feedback link in the chat box. If you give your feedback, thing, you will get your certificate to your registered mail ID uh, within a week. Uh, so make sure that you all fill the feedback and give your uh, valuable suggestions if you have any. And if you want any more uh, um, sessions more with us, you can also surely uh, put your uh, suggestion in the chat box. It will be very grateful. Please give your uh, feedback, guys, so you can continue. So before you are giving feedback, let me share the... IOT history, so which I missed this one. So I'll be sharing this one. So in 1969, we have started ARPANET. In 1982, research is connected a vending machine, Coca-Cola vending machine, but uh, in around 1982 by a group of students. But in 1989, so we have the World Wide Web and 1990, ARM. So whatever the ARM processor manufacturing is, uh, they have founded. And John Romke has demonstrated the first toaster controlled via internet. And in 1995, we had the first machine to machine application is used. And in 1999, so with Kevin Aston coined the term Internet of Things. So in 2000, so LG launches its first 
smart fridge which is connected to the internet and in 2007 so we have the first iphone is released the first smartphone which changed the entire industry mobile industry and 2008 so we have the number of connected devices surpasses the number of people and by 2025 we are experiencing uh, we are expecting 50 billion devices will be connected to this one and 2009 google started its project called self driving cars and 2011 so gardner has published this iot to the famous hype cycle and 2013 so we have the arm is spreading its wings so having the connectivity of the iot portfolio so 2014 google self driving car passes like this 2015 or 16 so this is the era where our india started receiving the iot this thing and things started moving in the moving in india and 2018 2019 and still we are seeing the growth 2021 so this is the uh, pillion uh, network so pillion is the iot smart sim based uh, this thing so where you can uh, use a gsm module to connect to the device from anywhere in the world so that is their life cycle and i've said i have some small history of internet things 1982 which is started with the soda machine or coca cola machine so same john room key kevin aston so 2011 we have the thermostat so 2015 we have the first fitbit going ipo 2016 we have the botnet uh, dns attack so this is security people started thinking about data security and data privacy of the iot devices so these links i will share in the chat which i have with me so and have a small demo for you so to explore the sensors of uh, this thing shall i share the links in the chat uh, bhavya uh, so what we'll do is we'll mail them that is better i guess everybody will get it because i could see people uh, getting down so what we'll do is we'll just uh, mail anyways we'll send them the uh, feedback link and the content i mean like with respect to the uh, information we can even share this link along with that yeah so i have a small example here so where people can use uh, explore the sensors in the mobile device there so this is a small you can share of... this link in on it maybe they can try it right away yeah yes thank you Guys, you can use the link. It's been shared in the chat box. Yeah. So please use this. Uh, so I have put the code in the GitHub. You can uh, see the GitHub source code as well. So where this program rotates or sends IoT data based on the screen device orientation. So if you, so I will show my app where the data can be collected here. So you can see it, uh, treat it as a command center. So where I'm using MQTT protocol to control the things. Okay, before they try, sir, uh, there's a small uh, comment that has been given from uh, uh, Green, Co Green Oscar winner, uh, Mr. Dharma Pabaki, sir. His, his, his comment, I mean, about the webinar. Uh, this webinar on IoT is one of the most educative and exciting and beneficial one that attended since first COVID-19 breakdown lockdown. When the world connected through webinars while work from home, Mr. Satishkar's approach to deliver the importance and evolution of IoT is very smooth right to the listener as he fed the historical developments, thereby making the attender to know more the answers. Know the answers. It shows his depth of knowledge on IoT couple. What has been the most in interesting that he covered the entire gamut progress of 1.0 to 1.5.0 industrial revolutions, including the latest sustainability and manufacturing. There were no clutters, no cl only clarity. There were, there were only many, many takeaways from Satish Rao Garu. For a curious mind, he has opened the Pandora box of IoT. I thank him and HIW for this uh, excellent IoT learning webinar. Dharma Prabhal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks, thanks, Dharma Prabhal. Yeah, see, people are connecting to the link, so they can see that uh, Hello World 326, Hello World 184. So these are the messages which I'm uh, generating a random number and printing on their mobile. So if you see, so this is the MQTT protocol, which I'm working at mqtt.eclipseprojects.io, which is free. So people are free. So when they are when they rotate the device, so I'm getting two, uh, if it is a landscape orientation and getting one, if it is a 
uh, portrait variant uh, device orientation. So by using this MQTT data, you can turn an actuator or you can turn an, uh, off an actuator or you can light an LED or you can play some song or you can control any device. So where you can rotate the, by just rotating your phone, by just tilting it from changing the device orientation. Yeah, I hope uh, this. Uh, so this is how you can control the sensors in your phone. And there are a lot of other sensors in your phone. And there are other modules. So we will cover up someday at some point of time. And you can subscribe to my YouTube channel where I will be sharing how you can control the sensors in your phone. So that is my next task. Uh, next task. So if you are subscribed, you can uh, uh, see those things. Without programming knowledge, you can have the knowledge of IoT. And I have someone, another example, which I will show the power of MQTT. So how you can uh, do the things. So all the source code is available in the GitHub. You can see and you can watch. So this is another. Uh, so this is MQTT works on the publisher and subscriber model. So. Anyone can uh, connect to this, open the second link, which I have shared. Um, so it's not in the chat box. Oh, it's not, sorry. So that is mobile three. So where I can send a message to that particular device by being anywhere, any part of the world. Yeah, I hope you are seeing my MQTT dashboard, right? Where we are getting messages. So, hello world 312 300. Suppose if I want to send a message to 300, just I can publish to that particular 300. So, hello world 300. And publish. I hope that the person who got the 300 got the message. Can you just confirm in the chat? You can even unmute and speak up. Yeah. Suppose my number is 278, which you are seeing on the number on the screen. So I can send a message to that particular all over 278. So I will see a So this is how, so the person who got 160, so who is the 160 person? So just can you reply in the chat box? So I can send, yeah, my number is 16. So Rohita, yeah, yes. So I can send a message to hello world Rohita. So I hope Rohita got your message personal in the private message saying hello world Rohita. I hope so. Rohita, you got that one? Can you please confirm, Rohita? Yeah. So 156. So this is uh, Giri, Giri Prasad. Hello, Giri. So I hope you got the message. Yes. Yeah. So you can see all these are devices. So which are connected to the command center or control center where the MQTT message plays a vital role. So I can say 370 Ganesh, hello Ganesh. So I hope Ganesh got the message. So if you see, yeah, thanks Ganesh. So Muttana. so this is how, so we are tracking. So I said there are two communication models. One is HTTP, another is MQTT. So if you see using the publish subscribe model, only Ganesh can get the message. So here 1151. So Muttana, so hello Muttana. So publish. So only that particular subscriber who subscribed to 1151 can get the message. Yeah, so Kirti 339. So this is how, and uh, this is very lightweight uh, protocol. So that's why it's being used and popular in uh, 
IoT industry and even other uses this uh, protocol. I hope Kirti got the message. Right. Thanks, guys. Thanks for your response. And I could see there are so many people fl flooded with the <laughs> yeah. uh, numbers. Um, sure, I, I hope it works. Maybe we can uh, give, I mean, like putting everybody's member, it will take so much of time. So if you have any other queries, we can move forward, I feel. Yes, Satish, sir, I think. Yeah, I hope I'm done. I, this is this is the power of MQTT and this is uh, the power of the sensors which we have, the mobile one dot HTML. So you can have the uh, view my source, uh, uh, view source is available in the GitHub. I will share the, some other examples which I have there. Uh, so this is how you can play with your mobile as an IoT device. So Kirti didn't get a message. <laughs> okay. Kirti, your number is? Your number is Kirti. It will be displayed in the private message on your mobile screen or on your laptop. So 339. 339. Yeah. So the private message column, you will get hello Kirti. Yeah. So this is a test server, friends. So it may have some limitations. So I hope uh, this is one thing. So still 433, 135. So this is how you can connect your devices to the MQTT protocol and communicate over the cloud. See, I'm controlling from my mobile, so which is in Hyderabad. So all the devices, suppose you feel that your mobile is an IoT device and then I can vibrate that mobile device by sitting it here, sitting from here. And you want to test that code? Suppose, let me check that one. On some mobiles it will work and some mobiles it won't work, the vibration code. So just I will paste in the chat. So whoever mobile vibrates, just say me yes, okay. So I'm I hope uh, people might have opened. So if anyone's mobile vibrates so it works in some mobiles and it doesn't work in some mobiles because of the security thing which has been added by android it's working in my galaxy m01 so where i can vibrate my mobile by sending a message from here yeah chenaya so thank you so i hope uh, i made your device to vibrate wow. yeah so it, it works on some phone banu so some browsers support, some phones support, and some phones are not supporting. Uh, file not phone, why? It is mobile2.html. Sorry. Why it's going to direct message? Yeah, this is the feature which is supported in some browsers and not in some this thing. So, yeah, Kitty said. Okay, phone. Okay, let me. I have to send a message to vibrate. So, Bagiradi. So, I'm sending a message. No, they are getting mobile2.html. Why? Oh, sorry. So, this is not the right one. So, Oh, I got this one. Just options. Wait, wait, wait. I will send everyone in meeting. Just wait. wait. Yeah. So this is the one. So sorry. Just connect to that one. Let me see whether this code is working or not. So those are the numbers so which you are getting but i are you feeling the vibration because i'm sending some uh, message here from this one anyone yeah bargavi thanks bargavi yeah 
so this is how you can control your device from anywhere so hamid yeah thank you hamid yeah bono thank you so this is the power of uh, your uh, priyanka so it's i has i said some phone works and some doesn't uh, uh, thanks giri so thanks sanjana thanks giri yeah yeah many thank you yeah this is how you can, this is the powerhouse uh, mobile device is a iot powerhouse yeah so the phones which are not supporting i can't do anything so for that you need to install an app so which i will share with you at some point of time so for this so this is just a sample so the picture is this is the only a trial of iot so the picture is uh, the full cinema is in uh, in the coming shows with the help of hia hia i can uh, launch a workshop or i can conduct more workshops on this one how you can uh, program this little devices okay yeah any questions just please let me know i think i am done with the day uh bhaiya anything uh, no sir thank you but any questions ka i think uh, nagratna has a question you're off yes right guys if you have any queries you can please uh, unmute yourself and speak or you can even put it in the chat box we'll be happy to answer your queries please give your feedback guys uh, and you can also chennaiya do you have any question no ma'am okay right yeah uh, so please subscribe to my youtube channel so for upcoming sessions so if you like the talks or as a gratitude for me to thank you so please subscribe to my channel sure sure uh, just a moment guys we'll give you the feedback link um, right i think the feedback link is posted please give your feedback guys um, right before you all give your feedback i just have a small announcement we have a batch starting for electrical uh, of 25th of this month i request all uh, if you have any queries with respect or you want to enquire about the batch details you can please uh, give give the information or call us on the respective number that has been put in the chat box for the more details okay and coming to the next session of iot we are planning for a uh, one week uh, workshop with respect to iot and we we'll, you'll soon get the details on our uh, youtube and then instagram as well as uh, linkedin pages please do follow us our uh, hiw social media pages for the more information regarding the workshops and our next coming batches also guys okay right i think the content has been posted in the chat box please uh, any other queries guys uh, there's a question from banu in how many days certificate will be provided it will be if you have filled the form right away you will receive your uh, uh, certificate if not we will look into the uh, respective thing and you, you have been given an uh, email id where you can uh, give us a message or you can put it as an you can send the reply on the number given numbers we'll get back to you in a week time banu i think the youtube channel has been sent mutanna uh, right any other queries guys okay so right so that's all for the day guys and uh, if anybody uh, else has any queries you can please put it in the chat box also or you can also um, put it in the uh, feedback link as a suggestion if you if you want to consult us or you want to have any queries or you can also put your uh, interest in the topic with respect to iot where we can plan for your next coming sessions also so thank you guys thank you uh, thank you satish garu for your wonderful time and session actually everybody were connected all the time and um, you have that uh, mesmerization to <laughs> have that uh, complete crowd uh, be in concentration with the focus with the session that that's really great thing and uh, actually we have learned many things and most of them are uh, have been putting your thanks so thank you so much guys uh, have a good day and happy weekend guys so we hiw signing off thank you thank you satish sir thank you bhavya bye